uh, episode 42 here on a lovely Wednesday at Placed in Shelter. Your host, Ryan Catarizzoli here. If you are watching on YouTube and want to be a part of the conversation, we're always live 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. You can use the link in the description below. And today I'm going to start out with a bit of a quarantine update. And uh, it actually happened this morning as I was getting up and getting the kids ready for daycare. Um, I went into Chase's room and I found this. Now, I told you before, Chase has been doing this thing where he completely takes off everything, including his diaper. And well, this morning he decided that uh, finger painting was going to be his recreational activity for the morning. And yes, I had to give him a bath before we went to daycare. So I started my day off on a wonderful smelly note. And with that, actually, it fit in perfectly with a meme somebody sent me. So uh, why am I the only naked person at this gender reveal party? So I don't know how to fix Chase. Uh, we tried putting his pajamas on backwards, but I think I have to cut the feet off of him because he gets mad. He doesn't like it. So I don't know. Welcome to life. So uh, today's episode is going to be a little bit different. Uh, and it's going to be get to know your host. Uh, somebody had sent me an email and they said, you know, we've done 40 some episodes, but we really don't know a lot about you, Ryan, your background, your past, your path, career path here in the industry. So we're going to talk a little bit about myself and some of the, the questions that they sent over to me, kind of some of the knowledge and passion and things that I have for it. But then don't worry, I do have some equipment here at the end as well. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing and uh, a little bit about me. So it started out when I was actually selling cars, and I was in the car industry doing some finance and selling, and uh, Michelle France actually was one of my customers, and she gave me a wonderful opportunity to get into the industry going on 10 years ago now. Um, so I started the business in, with a company called Joyon and Newview, and I was as green as green gets. I didn't know anything about the industry. Um, in fact, my very first day, she just told me to get a plane ticket to Cleveland, Ohio, of all places. So I flew out to Cleveland and began my career here in food service. So I started as a regional at Joanna Newview. Um, in fact, when I had my first rep groups and first responsibilities, I probably knew less about the industry than the equipment. And at the time, I knew nothing about my equipment. So uh, a lot of great mentors in the industry, obviously Michelle being one of them. But throughout the years, you know, some of the rep groups that I had, Tom Reddit Sales Agency, and uh, those guys really took me under their wing and worked with somebody who was a project, to say the least. Um, and then after that, as time went on, I actually was promoted to Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Joyon and Newview. And then my boss, Lou Anik, actually approached me, and I had the wonderful opportunity to come here to HATCO. Um, and one of the questions they asked were, uh, why HATCO? Um, obviously, I was very happy where I was. They gave me an opportunity for somebody that really didn't have any experience in the industry. Um, but Hatco being Hatco, you know, there's not a whole lot to be said there. They are, in my opinion, the best company in the industry from not only an equipment standpoint, from a quality standpoint, from an ESOP standpoint. Um, I couldn't be happier, and I'm truly blessed to be able to do what I do every day. Um, and I hope that all of you here can say the same thing that I do, is that I am truly happy to go to work every day. And I know there's a lot of people that can't say that, so I know that I'm very blessed. Um, the next question they had for me was some of the knowledge or perhaps advice that I would have for somebody that was newer in the industry. And the one thing I always go back to is when it comes to being a regional manager, I didn't know anything about the industry. And in fact, if you're not in the industry, it's hard to understand what a buying group is, what a consultant is, what a dealer, uh, what a dealer is is a little bit easier, but what a manufacturer's rep is is a little hard to understand at times. Um, so learning the industry takes a long time. But the one piece of advice that I would say is get to know your catalog, get to know your equipment. And because of that, I basically carried it around, I slept with it, and I knew my catalog inside and out. And because of that, I was able to overcome a lot of objections and a lot of times that being younger in the industry and not knowing much about it, at least being able to answer technical questions and know my equipment inside and out, I was able to uh, become successful. So that would be one of my biggest pieces of information that I would give somebody that was newer. Um, what is my current role here with HATCO? I work in the key accounts department, so I handle a lot of major chains throughout the country. And when Mark Ecker retired a few years ago because of my path, 
I was able to also pick up some of his territories as a regional manager. So I have a dual role. When I joke around, all it means is that I have two different bosses to report to. Um, so that's been going great. And then last but not least is what am I passionate about? And really the reason that I'm so happy with what I do is because I get to go out and meet all of you and I get to provide solutions for customers. And as hard as it is sometimes, as mentally straining as it can be, uh, there's a lot of mental stress that comes along with it. All of that is completely made up for by the ability to go out and, and meet each and every one of you. And when you really find a piece of equipment or a solution that helps out a customer, there's really no better feeling than that. So um, that would be what I'm very passionate about here at Hatkill. And then as Debbie would say, Debbie's passionate about drawer warmers, but I myself am very passionate about uh, heated holding cabinet. So my number one piece of equipment right now, I think, is the locker system. And if anybody has further questions on that or has customers, I've been giving Zoom meetings left and right with different customers uh, throughout the last couple of weeks, trying to promote the locker idea because I really think that is the next evolution of how people are going to be getting to go through. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen again. And as I promised, I am going to provide some hat code content here. And today we're actually going to be talking about the rice drawer warmer. So we just took a random path down my random career path here into Hatco and food service. And here's a random piece of equipment for you. So we did talk about the drawer warmers in a previous episode and talked about them being fully insulated and the 12 gauge stainless versus the 16 gauge stainless. And all of these things remain true, but we have a product that I think doesn't necessarily get enough attention or it just becomes a product that people don't remember because there's a lot of customers that offer rice. And this is a rice drawer warmer. Um, and with this, you have a digital temperature control for the drawers. And then you'll see here in a couple of slides that we also have an option for a rice well on the top. So not only can you store the rice for long periods of time or hold the rice for long periods of time, you can also serve directly out of the top of this unit. So as you can see in this picture, you can either get it with a flat top, you can get it with a utensil holder and then place your rice cooker directly on top of it. Or you can even have a well on the top and you can see it adds a infinite control here so that you can change the temperature of the well that the uh, rice is being placed in. Now here's the cool thing with this unit. It is standard and set up for a 23 cup Panasonic rice pot and that can go in either the top well or either of the drawers but you can also get an adapter for this, which will then hold a pound 30 cup rice uh, pot. So you have a lot of different options here. This is gonna give you a truly long quality hold time for the rice with the ability to serve as well. You know, I had a consultant ask me one time, um, when you're building in fabrication, you can get built-in wells and you can get built-in round soup wells like we've already covered here on the show but nobody is currently making a, a built-in rice pot for that same station. And if you're doing a wok or you're doing some sort of uh, Mexican or an Asian uh, dish where you need rice uh, and you need a lot of rice, they don't have that option for you. So depending upon your height requirements of the counter, my recommendation is you could build this directly into your fabrication, maybe have a cutout for it, and then this can sit right there on the fabrication line. So. I think one of the reasons we don't see it as much is we just don't think about it. So here's some food for the thought today and hopefully the rice drawer warmer will uh, be top of the mind the next time somebody's asking about rice. So with that, that's gonna wrap up today's episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it today. If you do have any questions, we can place them in the chat. Uh, let's see here, Chris Merritt, is there a David Hatch bobblehead version? You know, I would bet somebody along the way has taken a bobblehead and uh, doctored it, if you will, to be a David Hatch bobblehead. I'm sure if you talk to a Bruce Bauer or something like that, um, I know Brian has got an old, old plate of a caricature with David Hatch on it. So I'm sure somebody has one, Chris. Uh, Thomas, what do Viking fans in the state of Wisconsin have in common? We both love our cousins. <laughs> there, there, that's pretty good. We've got our cousin subs here. Jim, any big chains using this unit? Um, I don't know of any current chains utilizing this right now. Um, if Lou is on, he may have a better idea than I do because he works with the majority of the chains and he's been doing it for 
35, 40 years. Um, so if he knows of any, he can go ahead and put those in chat. Uh, airflow requirements if you build in a rice warmer into the fabrication. I will have to take a look and see if there's any requirements along the side. However, I don't believe so. I know with our current drawer warmers, we even have built-in options. So as long as there's some movement of air and it's not completely enclosed, I don't see it as being an issue, but great question. All right, with that, let's go ahead and share the screen one more time. And this one came in from Charlene Brennis. And uh, yeah, who knows what June's going to bring. So uh, this is all of us just barely peeking into the door that is June. So this one came in from Jim Yount. I really like this one because I'm a big South Park fan. Uh, but you remember I mentioned murder hornets, you know, a long time ago, it feels like. But this meme says uh, murder hornets. It feels like we skipped the murder hornets. And yeah, they were like here for a day and then all of a sudden we haven't heard another word about them. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I'm kind of going along the lines of that's a good thing, but it does feel like we skipped them. And then last but not least, Joe sent this one in and uh, it kind of goes along with the old Groundhog's Day, obviously. If the president comes out of his bunker and sees his shadow, <laughs> we'll have six more weeks of protests. So I'm hoping that it's a nice cloudy day because I don't need any more protests. We need to get over it. So. Uh, hopefully everybody can be back to normal and, and life can resume. So uh, with that, we're going to move on. So thank you very much for joining us today. As always, if you are joining on YouTube and want to be a part of the conversation, use the link below, 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. If you are subscribed to HACCO, use the bell notification. That'll let you know every time we post a new video. And as always, show that if you would like to show us that you're enjoying the content, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.